Today we're talking about freezing food, um, and mostly we're going to talk about fruits and vegetables. But if you have questions about freezing other things, we can talk about that. So why would we want to freeze food to begin with? One, uh, it's important to have nutritious foods all year round, right? So, you know, if we can freeze some of the produce that's starting to come in now and then throughout the warm weather months, um, that's ideal. Especially if we're the ones growing it, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> Um, or if you have a favorite, a favorite farmer that you buy from at the farmer's market, um, being able to, to preserve some of that produce that's your favorite. Right now, my favorite are strawberries, and they're in season. So being able to buy up a lot of strawberries at once um, with such a short window here in North Carolina is awesome to be able to freeze them and then have them all year round. Another thing, too, and you know, a reason why we have preserved food historically is because when a large crop comes in all at once, uh, we don't want to waste any food, right? So if it is your home garden that you have and you have tomatoes going gangbusters in the middle of July or towards the beginning of August, then you know you don't want to have to give all of them away to neighbors, which is saying it's a nice thing to do. Um, or you know, eat all the tomatoes all at once, all the tomato sandwiches. You can freeze them too. So why freeze? Some pros for freezing as opposed to canning. Um, and we will talk about canning actually next week. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on the types of canning and, and all that. I thought about combining these two and realized it's two big topics. <laughs> so we'll talk about that next time. Uh, but some pros for freezing. One, takes very little equipment. Um, you know, these items here are some of the pieces of equipment that I would use to freeze. And then of course, our freezer itself uh, is an important piece of equipment, but that's pretty much all you need. Um, canning can be a little bit more equipment heavy. The other great thing about freezing is that it's pretty fast. Um, you know, you put your food, get it ready, put it in the freezer, and it's frozen, usually within a few hours, depending on what you're freezing. Some cons to freezing, some drawbacks. Um, you might have limited storage space, unless you have one of those big chest freezers uh, that you can store all kinds of you know, produce in. And the other drawback is that it sometimes doesn't give you very much shelf life. Uh, it doesn't last very long in the freezer, and that depends on the food. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little while, which foods last longer and, and you know, general expiration dates. I say loosely because it's mostly about quality in the freezer as opposed to safety. That's another pro for, for freezing foods is that once we freeze foods, they're, they're pretty darn safe. We kind of stop the clock on any um, bacteria or any other pathogen that might be in our food from growing. So. It can help with, with the safety side of things as well. So how are we going to freeze our food? As I said, we're going to talk mostly about fruits and vegetables. Uh, for fruits, they're pretty easy. I wanted to show you, I started freezing today some bananas. And what I've done here is called a tray freeze. So you can kind of see it's a very, it's a small tray. It's not very many bananas. I had one banana on hand. Um, but if you spread out the pieces of food that you're going to freeze, um, once they're frozen, and these have been in there a couple hours, they're, they're pretty much frozen. Once they're frozen, you can put them in whatever container that you're wanting to store them in in the freezer, whether that's a bag or a jar. And we'll talk about different containers here in a sec. Um, and then they won't stick together. So the thing about freezing wet foods, especially fruits, um, is that if you freeze them just from normal room temperature, sometimes they'll stick together and clump. Um, so freezing them in separate pieces first, tray freezing, is a great way to prevent that. I'll have to lose my, I'll have to lose my banana. You'll notice that I've got this tray lined with parchment paper. I've got my parchment paper here. Um, you don't have to do that, but it's a great way to keep things from sticking. And you know, we didn't, we weren't going to talk much about freezing meat today, but 
Um, if you're freezing meats and you're wanting to stack multiple pieces, uh, we do this with sausage or with chicken breast. You can put a piece of parchment paper in between the items of food and it will help keep things from sticking. So you know if you've ever tried to, um, you know, layer chicken breasts or whatever <laughs> in a bag and then freeze them, they come out and it's six chicken breasts, you know, sandwiched together. So parchment paper in between, super helpful. I'm going to put these bananas back in so they don't fall. Vegetables are a little bit more complicated. For vegetables, most of the time, we need to blanch them. And that's just mostly because the quality starts to break down in the freezer if we don't blanch them ahead of time. So what is blanching? Blanching is when we plunge vegetables into boiling water, or really any food that we're blanching, plunge it into boiling water for a certain amount of time, and then immediately shock that food with a cold temperature in an ice water bath to stop the cooking process. So it kind of, it deactivates some of the enzymes that are in the food. Um, it helps preserve the quality a little bit better. It preserves the color so that the food doesn't get kind of brown in the freezer. Um, and it just, it makes for a better product when you pull it out of the freezer to use it. So how to blanch. And I realized as I was planning for this video that we're probably going to have to do a whole video on blanching and step-by-step step how that works, but I'll give you kind of a brief rundown right now. So just any normal pot will work. Um, you know, you fill your pot with water, get it boiling, and then whatever food that you're going to blanch, you throw in there. Now, in the uh, chat box over here, I've got the blanching times for different vegetables linked. Um, you can go, and it's linked to the National Center for Home Food Preservation, which is actually an extension managed site by the University of Georgia. Um, so it's, you know, tested, it's, it's evidence-based. We highly recommend using that for any questions you might have about food preservation. Um, so depending on the food, you know, the food will stay in the boiling water for anywhere between a minute to like five minutes, really depends on the type of food. And then if you have an insert in your pot that you could pull out, so they make these blanching pots, right? Which is, it looks like a spaghetti pot. It has a kind of a colander like insert in the middle and you pull it out. And what that achieves is that it pulls all the food out at once. So all the food stops cooking at one time and goes into the ice bath. So you have a separate bowl here ready, filled with ice and water. You don't wanna get that ready after your, your uh, food is, is cooking because you wanna have it real quick to put your food in so that it shocks the food and stops that cooking process. If you don't have a blanching basket, this is what's called a spider. So you can scoop the food out, dump it in your ice water, and uh, that can work too. So that's blanching in a real, you know, quick nutshell. We'll do another video. I'll probably just upload a video sometime this week. That's a quick minute or two, 101, how to blanch. Okay. When we're thinking about storing our foods, we have a couple of options. We can do things in plastic bags, and I've got this big two gallon bag here. But the reason I picked this out of my drawer is to show you uh, that this is rated for freezer storage. It has a double zipper, so it's going to, or a double line zipper, so that it keeps the uh, air out more effectively. So it'll prevent the freezer burn um, more effectively than just a normal uh, sealable bag would. So try to look for freezer rated bags uh, when you buy them if you're gonna use them for the freezer. And the same deal with any plastic or glass that you put you know, things in, if you're using rigid containers instead, um, you want glass in particular that is freezer safe. So some glass will shatter once it goes in the freezer and we don't want that to happen. Um, so most canning jars are you know, considered safe for extreme temperatures. So whether it's the extreme temperature of canning, high temperature, or the extreme 
terms of being in the freezer, uh, you're good to go. So make sure that your um, jars say freezer compatible or whatever it is. And it will say it usually on the packaging itself. But on this particular jar, it even has a line and says for freezing, fill here. So they know that a lot of people are using these jars for freezing. You can tell I've got a couple different um, mouth sizes here for my jars. Regular mouth jar. This is a wide mouth jar. Wide mouth, obviously a little bit wider. This has straight sides, and this one has a little bit more of a tapered neck. This one's going to be much easier uh, to fill, especially if you're putting your hand down in there with whole pieces of food. You could use these for um, liquid, that's fine. The key is food expands as it freezes, right? So we want to leave, just like the jar indicates, a little bit of space. We call it head space, just like in canning. Uh, we want to leave a little bit of headspace for that food to expand. Also, depends on the type of food. Um, so for liquids, they might expand a little bit more. Maybe leaving a full inch. Um, for solids, it could be as little as half an inch. But making sure that, you know, on, as a general rule, you kind of don't fill past that thread line where the threading starts. Okay? You can do, you know, different sizes of jars. You could do... Here we have a pint, this is a quart, whoa, whoa, back up. Pint, quart, my brain is kind of off today. Um, so depending on what you're filling and what you're using, you know, if you've got quite a lot of um, product, maybe a bigger jar is a better idea. And another thing I wanted to say about the jars before we move off from that is that, you know, they make these lids that are plastic that go with the threading of canning jars that are really, really good for the freezer. Um, the metal can start to rust a little bit if you use the, the typical two-piece metal lids and bands. Um, so the plastic is a really good idea. You can buy those pretty much anywhere. And canning jars are standard, right? So if it's a regular mouth jar, it doesn't matter what brand you buy, they're the same um, diameter. Same deal with a wide mouth jar, the key is if you're buying wide mouth jars, remember to buy a wide mouth lid because this one actually fits inside the rim. That wouldn't work. You can also use, you know, glass storage containers that um, are not candy jars that are um, rated for freezer use. So in the case of this container, we've got a little um, freezer symbol right here. It's kind of a snowflake. And so that gives you the indicator that it's safe to use in the freezer. So that's good too. Okay. Some things to keep in mind with the freezer. One, we always want to label our food. You don't want to pick a jar out of your freezer and say, I know that's soup, but I have no idea when I made that. So just like if you're putting things away in your pantry, we talked about this last time, if you're putting things away in your fridge that you've made dressings or marinades or whatever it is really, you want to label your, your food, um, especially for freezer storage, which is, tends to be longer term storage. Uh, keep your freezer at zero degrees Fahrenheit or below for best quality. So you want your foods to freeze relatively quickly and stay frozen. If the freezing process is slow, then the quality will be impacted. So for that reason, we also don't want to overload the freezer with unfrozen food. So, you know, say I get my strawberries and I kind of get really excited and start to freeze all these strawberries. Well, it might, they might not freeze very well if I'm putting multiple pounds of strawberries in the freezer at once. So just do a little bit at a time, you know, tray freeze each batch. You can tray freeze with a normal size tray. You know, I used a small one. I apologize for the claim. I used a small one, but whatever fits inside your freezer is fine. Um, and that's a pretty good amount for freezing at one time. Whatever will fit on a standard baking sheet. We'll put this up here. Okay. Um, you also want to put food in the coldest parts of the freezer to freeze the fastest. 
So what's the, the hottest part of your freezer or the warmest part of your freezer? Right there at the door, right? Where you open it up. So put things at the back of the freezer, put things at the base and cut them on the sides. That's going to be the coldest part. It's, you know, got, it's got the coldest part, right? We also want to make sure that the circulation is, um, the air is moving in there to keep, to kind of cool things down. That's important as well. Once things are frozen and you've packed them, say you put them in a plastic bag, we do want to stack those pretty tightly um, just to kind of keep frozen things frozen, right? If you have a uh, refrigerator or freezer thermometer, that is a great way to monitor the temperature of your fridge and freezer to make sure that things are staying frozen, just as a thought. Some things that really don't do well in the freezer include sour cream, mayonnaise, um, creams, custards, milk sauces sometimes, they'll separate. So if it's a liquid dairy product, sometimes, you know, they'll just start to separate um, which wouldn't be pleasant when you pulled it out of the freezer, would be technically edible, but uh, not pleasant. Lettuce, cabbage, celery, cucumbers, really high in water, so they get really soggy um, and, and kind of waterlogged when you pull them out of the freezer. So no freezing salad. Uh, we probably also don't want to freeze cooked noodles. Now, we talked a few weeks ago about you can freeze um, you know, different pantry items like flour, you could freeze rice, uh, but you don't want to freeze cooked noodles because when you heat them back up, they'll be kind of mushy, a little bit mealy. Um, for fried foods, you don't want to freeze those. They'll lose crispness. They'll get soggy. Uh, and then some spices and seasonings, actually, their flavors will change as they sit in the freezer over time. So things like pepper, cloves, garlic, they might get stronger in flavor, they might get a little bit bitter. Um, so check on the herb that you're going to, uh, if you have a plan to freeze something, check on um, the National Center for Home Food Preservation and see if it's one of those herbs that's listed as not being very great for the freezer. And again, that link is in the top of the chat box over there. And, and y'all, if you have any questions as we go along, throw your questions in the chat box and we'll talk about them at the end. So how long do we keep things in our freezers? It kind of depends. So produce items tend to, to keep the longest, which can be surprising to some folks. Um, it tends to be about eight months to a year. Now granted, that's if you've blanched items the way that they're supposed to be blanched or um, you know, packed them a certain way, gotten as much of the air out of the bag as possible. So there's a lot of factors at play here. But as a general rule, about eight months to a full year, you can keep produce. For poultry, it's about six to nine months. For fish, it's three to six months. For ground meat, you have about three to four months. And then cured and processed meats, um, about one to two months. Another factor that's going to impact um, that time is the temperature of your freezer. So having that thermometer in there can really help. So does anyone have any questions? I know we're kind of running long. It's it's a long one today, but there's a lot of things to think about when you're freezing foods. Any, any questions or thoughts? I don't see any. If you have any thoughts about it and you come to it again, um, throw them in the comment section of the video once it's uploaded and, and ready to view on YouTube like a normal YouTube video, and we'll talk about things there. I'll monitor that chat so that I can... Uh, check back with you guys. And remember, next week we'll do our video on canning. So if you have any questions about canning, whether it's water bath um, or the pressure canning, come with your questions and be ready to ask because we're going to talk about all kinds of canning things. So everybody have a great weekend. Um, unfortunately, I think it's going to be raining, but <laughs> try, to, try to do something outside maybe. Uh, even if it is in the rain. And we'll see you next Thursday at 4 p.m. right here. And I'm, by the way, I'm calling this Alamance Extension Eats. So we'll see you next week on Alamance Extension Eats. Bye.